we are on a quest. On a mission to find the native plant and animal species of southeastern Arizona. Okay, we're watching the Green Dream Project. Jim here. Jessica. And we're so dedicated to bringing you videos about wildlife in the area that we are here freezing at the Whitewater Draw. You usually don't see so much uh, frost covered things here in Arizona, but it's icy. So we're here at the Whitewater Draw because it's that time of year. The cranes are here, and they're here full force. You might be able to hear them, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they could probably <laughs> hear them. They could probably hear the cranes better than us right at this point. <laughs> so technically, sandhill cranes are not native to Arizona, but they are a migratory bird, and they spend every winter here. So we wanted to show you guys a little about the cranes. I don't know if you've heard the term snowbirds, but these, they're quite literally snowbirds, right? <laughs> they want to get away from the snow as much as uh, human beings do. Sandhill cranes are a large type of crane that is found mostly in North America. They're the most common type of crane. And according to the fossil record, they may be one of the oldest known species of birds to still exist. These cranes have gray bodies, white cheeks, and red foreheads. And they have these long necks, long dark colored legs, and long dark pointed beaks. <laughs> They're fairly large birds about two and a half to four feet tall, and the average weight is six to 14 pounds. As you can hear, they make this kind of loud trumpeting sound. Yeah, kind of like a trumpety, warbly. That could be just because there's so many of them out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little difficult to distinguish the sound of just one. This is the sound of many. The legion. Now the cranes are omnivorous. They will kind of eat what's available at the time and location, but they mainly feed on like seeds and grains. They spend a lot of time in wetland areas, such as marshes or bogs. They kind of paint themselves with mud from the areas by preening it into their feathers. And even though they have gray feathers, this could sometimes give them a, uh, a reddish brown appearance. The lifespan of these cranes is quite remarkable. They can actually live up to 20 years. And they're monogamous. Once they mate, they mate for life. Uh, much like how Jessica chose me, they choose their mate by their elaborate dancing skills. <laughs> They'll jump, bow to each other. They'll flap their wings, and they might throw uh, they might throw things into the air like sticks or plants. <sighs> Dancing is the most common during breeding season, but it can happen all year long. 
They love to dance. These birds love to party. <laughs> Breeding pairs will return to the same sites year after year, sometimes even reusing the same nests. They nest on the ground, usually on dry land, but near water, or in shallow water with floating nests that are anchored to plants. Since they are on the ground, they are a target for a lot of predators, such as coyotes, foxes, cougars, bobcats, owls, and even eagles. But they're not completely helpless. These birds do have a line of self-defense maneuvers. Again, they'll resort to the jump, a kick. You can't see my kicks, I can't kick that high. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but is the sandhill crane the basis for the move in the Karate Kid. <laughs> the crane kick. Very well thank you. I think it is. Don't fact check me on that. They'll kind of move forward with their wings open and they'll hiss. <laughs> yeah, tell me you would attack that. You wouldn't. They can stab with their beak. It is strong enough to actually puncture the skull of a small carnivore. Kind of a remarkable bird. Sandhill cranes have a pretty large wingspan, like five to seven feet. This gives them the ability to soar high in the sky, kind of like hawks or eagles do. And they'll use these rising columns of warm air to lift them up and keep them aloft for hours. I feel like they're getting louder. So we're gonna have to speak up these cranes. They're not gonna just let us film here. So they can stay aloft for hours just soaring and not having to flap their wings so much so they don't have to expend as much energy, which of course is useful if you're migrating long distances. Of the six subspecies of sandhill cranes, half of them are migratory. And those birds will do their breeding in the northern part of the U.S., in Canada, and Siberia and then they'll migrate down here to the southwest or to Florida or Mexico. But here's really the best place. You don't want to go to Florida. Oh, no. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding, my Floridian friends. We love you. <laughs> Sandhill cranes usually just live in pairs or in family groups, but uh, when they're migrating or during the winter, like now, they'll form these large, uh, what you would call survival groups of unrelated cranes and they'll forage together and roost together at night. Here in Arizona, the cranes could arrive here in the winter as early as September and stay as late as March, but most of them are going to be here between November and February. There's four main sites in Arizona where the cranes can be found and it's in the Sulphur Springs Valley area. One of those sites is right here at the Whitewater Draw. That's pretty much right in our backyard, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's possible to see over 30,000 sandhill cranes here. So it's a major winter site for them. The cranes will roost here at night and in the morning around sunrise, They'll usually leave and go to feeding sites, which might be nearby croplands, pastures, or wherever they can find food. And they'll stay there a few hours, and then they might go to another site called loafing sites, where they, I guess, loaf around, just kind of hang out. And then, then they might go to a feeding site in the afternoon before returning here. It's really cool to get here around sunrise, like right now, or sunset when they're coming back and see all these birds flying around. For anyone who can't get here in person, the Whitewater Draw does have a crane cam and they have a live stream feed of the site so you can see the cranes and what they're doing, which is pretty cool. And that is it. Thank goodness we are done 
because we are freezing. <laughs> it's like 30 uh, some degrees out, which probably isn't very cold for a lot of you, but for us, it's rough. So please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed hearing about cranes or if you enjoyed watching us freeze. Definitely subscribe to get more information about really cool animals like this and to see what fun new projects we've got going on. Plus, I think there's a uh, contest going, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So definitely share it with a friend or two. <laughs> Uh-oh. Ah! We're good. <laughs> crew, crew has a mind of his own. He's you, ready to leave. Crew's ready to leave. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.